out. Ladies and gentlemen, babies and elephant, welcome to another new video. My name is Bosley. I'm here to share with you guys a build, Balak Hierophant. Now, this is a very, very interesting build because uh, it has very, very cool clear speed and it's really fun to play with. Uh, as you know, Arc is something like, um, it's a lightning spells that chains around all the enemies. So the more in, they have in a pack, it will chain all of them. As you can see in the showcase earlier, um, the, ch the map clearing is actually really fun like it's you just run around and just you know spam your arc and then just kills everything in the map uh if you're looking for a build to you know play with delirium uh mechanic and to you know uh clear off uh clear maps and stuff and have a decent amount of survivability with not too much investment and this is this is the right build for you to play with it's something to try like it, it's a first spellcaster build for me as well it's the first time I'm trying out a spellcaster build because they introduced uh, in this league they introduced quite a few uh, really interesting um, uh, skill gems, which is the archmage, and that's the one that we're gonna take advantage of. So what does archmage do? Uh, before I go into the build uh, explanation, the archmage basically is a skill gem. I'll just show it to you here. Let me see. So archmage support basically is a support gem. Uh, the more unreserved mana you have, the more it will pump up damage. So basically what you can get, uh, how do you scale from the spell damage from Archmage, is basically having unreserved mana as much as you can, and also uh, the cost of your skill. The higher the mana cost, the higher the damage, because as you can see, it says your supporter skills gain added lightning damage for the, mana, uh, uh, for the amount of mana cost of the skill. So let's say your skill costs you a lot of mana, that skill will be increased damage because of the Archmage support. So we are making, are basically taking advantage of uh, this uh, gem right here, and we are bu mainly building uh, scaling mostly on energy shield because uh, Hierophant has uh, uh, the ascendancy nodes, which helps you more on uh, energy shield and mana. So that's what we are trying to scale from. Uh, 
uh, let's get into it shall we so the first part i want to explain first is the ascendancy so there is actually quite a few uh, ascendancies out there you can choose from if you really want to scale damage for this uh character the best ascendancy i would say is assassin but i just wanted to see what i can push the limit for hierophant because hierophants out there mostly is just storm brand builds <laughs> So I really want to try something different, like I want to try to put in Arc on this build and see how it works. Um, it's pretty decent, I would say. In terms, uh, clear Spree is fun. It's fun to clear maps. Uh, but against like um, Shaper Boss or uh, Guardians, uh, it's a bit of a hassle as you can see earlier. Uh, it takes a while just to kill them, so it's not easy, but that's the only drawback. So the only drawback is that, right? And one of the biggest flaws I want to mention, I'm going to be really honest with you, one of the biggest flaws for you you will encounter is stun. When you run around, because when you cast your arc, uh, there is like a cast delay, uh, 0.29 seconds. So when you cast that 0.29 seconds, if you get stunned, you can't cast. So you need to, you know, run out of the uh, situation where you can cast again. So you might, you want to cast arc like far away because the range of the arc is actually quite far. So you don't have to really worry about it. So I would say one is the single target is not that strong because nevertheless, Arc is still a map clearing skill, not so much on a single target. Unless you want to build Arc on a single target, then Assassin will be a much better choice. So map clearing is one and then the two is stun. Everything else is okay, right? So the ascendancy, first off, you want to pick up is you want to pick Divine Guidance. So uh, all the small nodes here gives mana as well. So this is mana and mana regen. So Divine Guidance, this one gives you 30% extra mana, uh, maximum mana, and 10% damage is taken from your life before your mana, but that doesn't really matter because uh, we are not scaling life. So uh, most importantly, the max mana we're going to get because uh, the more mana we have, the more damage you'll pump out, okay? And uh, then the next one you want to go for is go for uh, Illuminated Devotion. So this one basically gives you uh, increased area effect. Uh, increased spell damage leaves for life uh, when you have arcane surge and 40 percent increased spell damage when you have arcane surge so uh, you pretty much get arcane surge almost all the time because when you get arcane surge when you cast spells you will increase 40 percent spell damage and then after that you want to pick up arcane blessing first because arcane blessing allows you when you are under the arcane surge uh, what do you call it when you're under the arcane surge aura uh the buff you are immune to all the elemental ailments like freeze, frozen, chill, uh, scorch, shocked, sap, everything. So when you're under arcane search, you're pretty much uh, immune to all the, all these ailments, which is really good. And it gives you gain arcane search when you kill, uh, hit an enemy with a spell, or your totems hit an enemy with a spell, which is really cool. And then lastly, you want to go for Sanctuary of Thought. So this one gives you a lot of energy shield. It gives you 20% maximum mana as extra energy maximum uh, energy shield because we're scaling a lot of mana here so more the more mana you have the more energy shield you will get okay so 20 percent of your total mana pool will go to your energy shield and brand recall doesn't really matter because we're not playing brands and brand attachment range doesn't really matter um okay so a, a little adjustment here if you don't want to go for illuminated devotion first you can go for this so for more survivability first before you go for damage depends on the situation uh, if it's early game, I suggest to go. Maybe you can go for Century of Thought first, and then you go this way. So the first ascendancy, note this one, and then uh, Century of Thought, uh, Illuminated Devotion, and then after that, Arcane Blessing. All right. So that is for the ascendancy. I uh, want to go for go through the uh, the gear choices. For the one, I'm using a one because uh, one actually can uh, give you pretty good, uh, decent amount of spell damage. So this one I crafted myself. Uh, I used the essence to craft it. Basically, I used the essence of uh, the one that gives uh, cast speed and crafted on this one. And it gave me uh, lightning damage, crit multi, and also uh, penetration for the lightning resist. And I crafted a uh, spell damage on top of it. I wouldn't say this is a really huge item because, okay, of all the gears here, the most expensive one is Chev Chev uh, Chevron's wrappings, okay? But this is not mandatory. Yes, this one gives you a shit ton of energy shield. But it's not like the most important part of the build, okay? Everything else here costs less than 50c, okay? The most expensive part will be this one. If I take this, okay, now I have 7.4k energy shield, okay? If I take this off, I have 6k. Not the best, but it's not the worst either, okay? 
So what is the replacement for the shafts? Okay, I'll, um, basically this one, <laughs> Solaris Lorica. So this one gives you armor. It doesn't give you energy shield, but it gives you armor. So why do we want to use shafts or this armor? Because of the chaos damage does not bypass energy shield. Because our life, we are reserving all our life, okay? So when we reserve all our life, we don't have life left. So when you do have life left, when you take chaos damage, you will instantly die. So that's why you need uh, chaos damage cannot bypass your energy shield so that it doesn't cut through your energy shield and go straight to your life. That's the reason why you want to get either one of these shields, okay? So you can just put on this shield and it'll give you a bit more strength, uh, give you a lot more armor, which gives you more, a bit more survivability. But yes, you lose a lot, of, a lot of energy shield. But, you know, if you can save up to get a five link or a six link, it's up to you, okay? Then the next piece here will be the crown of the inward eye. Again, this one is really cheap. Uh, the one without the helm enchant will be less than 2C, I think. Yeah, it's really, really dirt cheap. This one drops on Cyrus. So you want to get this one. If you can, if you can afford it, go for something that gives a helm enchant either the chain additional times or the arc damage. Either one, which is really good. Okay, so this one gives you a lot of armor. So the, because without this without these, um, helmet, you will have very low armor. So you will take a lot of damage most of the time. So you want to reduce that by having a lot more armor. And this one gives you more energy shield and more mana, which is what we want. So this is a very crucial part. And uh, at zero is foible. So this amulet is really cheap as well. I believe it should be less than 50c. Maybe I, I can't really remember, but it's really cheap. So this one gives you a lot of flat mana. Uh, mana regen, a lot of mana regen is like 117% I'm getting from this one. And 21% maximum mana as well. So you're getting a lot of mana regen and mana from this one. Okay. Um, and as for the anointment, I anointed this Thunderous Salvers. So what Thunderous Salvers do, it gives me one additional Unleash Seal. Because we are running Unleash support with our Arc. So if you want to run this, it's quite expensive. Because the anointment itself is two Golden Oils and one Sapia Oil. Which is not cheap. Uh, if you don't want to run Thunderous Salvos, you can. You can just pick up uh, another node that gives you mana or essentially gives you mana or gives you energy shield would be good, okay? So that one is up to you. I'm using this because I want to have, have additional seal. Uh, as for the uh, shield, this is really quite important as well. So this one is mainly the shield that we are using to reserve our life so that we get the auras, okay? We're getting three auras from this shield itself. So put in the gem for Wrath. So this one gives me a lot more uh, lightning damage. We put in discipline and we put in running uh, zealotry. So I'll explain the skill gems in a minute. And uh, the rings will be pretty much aiming for mainly intelligence, mana, and you want to craft fast start energy shield recharge because you want to regen as fast as you can. And this one the same thing: uh, intelligence, energy shield, and mana, and also uh, you know faster faster start of the energy shield recharge. If you can, uh, try to. Put in uh, try to get some with uh, a bit more resist if you're not uh if you're having problem with resist uh, you know you can scale around uh for me the gears i'm wearing right now i'm pretty much capped in terms of resist um 75 75 and 76 i have 1500 armor which is pretty solid so those are the rings uh as for the um gloves the, so this one the gloves void bringer it gives you a lot more dps because this one gives you one level to the socket elemental gems it gives you crit chance for spells, it gives you a lot of energy shield, and it gives you increased mana cost of skill. So that is the thing, right? Because we are scaling um, mana cost of skills and mana, so this will increase the cost of the skills, which, which means that it will give you more damage, basically. And energy shield gain on kill, it gives you leech on energy shield, which is what we want as well. So this is a very crucial part. So all the uniques here are actually very, very important. So basically, so there's only three, any, uh, there's four anyway. So the helm, the gloves, the armor, and the amulet. Everything else, try to get it rare and get as much everything else as you need, like res, mana, energy shield, from well, as much as you can. Oh, sorry, five, because of the kite shield as well. My bad. Um, for the belt, the best will be crystal belt, because this one gives you a lot of flat energy shield. And also, the one I got here is uh, my res, my mana, and my armor. For the boots, uh, intelligence, uh, energy shield, mana, res, and moose So as you can see, all my gears here is either mana, energy shield, res, and um, mana, energy shield, res, and intelligence. 
That's what you want to get. So when you get more intelligence, you get more mana. When you get more mana, you get more energy shield, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. It's all linked together, okay? So this is in terms of the gear choices. Now, I'm going to go through the uh, skill gems. There's quite a few skill gems here that you can play around with whatever you want to put in. I haven't put in any other skill gems yet. So at the moment now, I'm just running all the core uh, skill gems that I'm running right now. So for the uh, weapon, I'm using uh, Spell Totem Support with Wave Conviction. So the reason why I use Spell Totem Support with Wave Conviction, if you don't have Spell Totem Support, you will need to cast a Wave of Conviction manually, which is a hassle sometimes because you're running around. So you want something to keep spamming the Wave of Conviction while you do something else. So when you cast a Spell Totem down like this, right, and then the Wave of Conviction will blast out as soon as it has contact with enemies, okay? So that's the link for the weapon. Uh, as for the helmet, I'm using Clarity, um, Conductivity, Storm Brand, and Curse on Hit. So Clarity, the reason why I'm using Clarity is level 1 is just because uh, I have a Watcher's Eye linked to it, uh, which gives me 10% um, mana gain on kill, uh, a chance to gain on kill. That's the whole reason why I'm using Clarity anyway. So this one is not mandatory. Uh, conduct conductivity, you want this linked with the Curse on Hit and Storm Brand because Here's the thing, when you cast Storm Brand on the enemy, the Brand Stick attaches to the enemy and the Curse on Hit will apply the Curse, which is the Curse of the Conductivity. So it will ap apply the Curse on them, which gives them minus 43% Lightning Resist. So this one will help you uh, on the single target to kill the bosses. And stuff, okay, so this one you want to cast a Brand on the boss and then after that you cast your Arc. Um, the main uh, armor, the main like, uh, six thing that we're having right now will be Arc. Uh, Archmage support, uh, Lightning Penetration support, Unleash support. So how Unleash support works, right? So Unleash is actually quite interesting. Basically, the Unleash, it will stack up here. If you can see here, there's a number 4 here, okay? So uh, the default is 3. Uh, the only reason I have 4 is because of the Thunderous Salvos, okay? So basically, it stacks up to 4 seals. It gains a seal every 0.7 seconds when you haven't cast a spell. You gain seals up to four, and when you cast the spell with four, let's say four seals, when you cast a spell, the effect will reoccur again. That means it will like repeat kind of on the enemy, which boosts a lot of DPS. So the more seals you have, the more it will pump out the damage. It's basically like you're pumping everything into one shot, something like that. So that's how uh, why we use unleash. That's why when we clear maps, it's really good because it's really fast because it pumps out all the damage when you clear with the uh, Unleash. Uh, Lightning Damage Support and Spell Echo. So Spell Echo basically uh, repeats additional chain with uh, no cost of mana. So if you are running a 5 link, uh, if you ask me what do you want to take out, you can choose to take out uh, Added Lightning Damage. Because Added Lightning Damage uh, is the least important out of the 6 things. Uh, for the gloves, uh, I'm running Flame Dash with Righteous Fire and Arcane Cloak and Portal, just for fun. So basically, Righteous Fire... Why are we running uh, after a Righteous Fire? Because of the Val Righteous Fire, not the main Righteous Fire, okay? So the Val Righteous Fire... The whole reason why we're running Val Righteous Fire is because it grants us 30% more spell damage, which is a lot. Comparing to increase, more is a lot more damage compared to increase. So when you cast um, the Val Rogers Fire and then you blast your Arc, the Arc will have 30% more spell damage. <coughs> That's the whole point. We didn't use the Rogers Fire, only the Val Rogers Fire, okay? And Arcane Cloak is basically our buff that we use to, uh, when we, before we head into the boss room. So basically, it spends 66% of your uh, total mana. So your mana will go down and then you want to, uh, you know, heal up your mana first before you go in. So 75% of the damage hits taken is taken from the buff first, okay? So it's like a mana shield where the mana blocks the damage first before it hits you, which is really important. So this is like a, a guard shield that you really want to get. It's a new gem uh, just released on 3.10. So this one, we'll check it out. And portal. And lastly, I'm just running a sudden, uh, lightning golem just for the cast speed, okay? So those are the skill gem links. And the flask will be... Uh, I'll go over to the flask. The first one, I'm just using the uh, life flask just because I want to remove the bleeding. You can change to something else if you want. Uh, Swindle Swallows uh, will be very important in this build because you want to recover your uh, mana and energy shield when you hit. So basically, this one will give you a lot of uh, leech. Okay. 
And if you can take this, uh, the uh, mod that gives you the unveil mod that gives you 15% of damage taken from hits is leech as life during flask effect. Oh, sorry, my bad. So we're not using life. Sorry. Uh, my bad. Forget that. You want to get the crit chance with uh, Cinder Swallow Sun. Okay. Uh, why so? Because, okay, why so gives us alley res. Basically, this one, the whole reason we were using this is because of the um, lightning penetration. So how does this why so work is basically the highest uh, resistance you have, that is the element that you will um, penetrate through. So my highest will be uh, lightning. So when I use, it will penetrate lightning. It will cut through lightning uh, resist of the enemy. Okay. Um, diamond flask for crit and some move speed on it. And lastly, we want to have an eternal... Uh, mana flask so eternal mana flask you don't want to get anything that gives you instant recovery you want to get something that gives you flash effect is not removed at full mana so even though you're full mana the effect doesn't stop so this is very important that, that's what you want to have okay that's the flash choices now i'm going to go through the pantheon uh the pantheon you want to go for soul of arakali because this one uh helps you block off a lot of chaos damage that you're trying to uh prevent trying to avoid and try to get at least the uh the added, uh, the, sorry, the, the the first line of mod that you can actually un unlock, um, capture queen of the great tangle. So this one gives you fifty percent increased recovery rate of life and energy shield if you stop taking damage over time recently, which is really important. So it will boost up a lot of regeneration for your energy shield. And for the um, the small node, I'm just taking Soul Shikari because it reduces all the chaos damage I'm about to take. So just try to block off the uh, chaos damage basically. So that's the Pantheon. And lastly, you want to go through the skill tree. All right. So skill tree, basically, we'll be starting off uh, from Hierophant over here. And then you want to move up here. The first, note, first notes you want to pick up uh, will be Insightfulness. So this one gives you uh, Energy Shield, uh, Mana, and reduced Mana Cost on Full Energy Shield. Because I have Clarity on, so I don't have, uh, I don't have to worry about uh, Full Energy Shield. So Maximum Mana. And you want to move down here, Arcane Potency. So this one gives you crit chance and uh, crit multi for your spells and then after that you want to move to unnatural calm uh, this one gives you energy shield and uh, lightning res and recharge rate um, deep thoughts basically gives you uh, mana and uh, intelligence and then you want to go down here and then pick up uh, annihilation this one gives you uh, again crit chance and crit multi and then you want to go for prodigal perfection this one gives you spell damage and mana and 2% spell damage per 100 mana you have, up to 40%. So obviously this one is going to give me 40% already. And uh, if you can uh, pick up uh, the jewel socket, you can put up a jewel and here, because you have to go through here, uh, pick up Fevered Mind, the jewel. Uh, this jewel is about 30 to 40 C. Um, so the jewel is perfect for this build because of the increased spell damage and increased mana cost. Because we want to increase the mana cost when we blast and it gives you more damage. So this one will give you a lot of damage. So... As you can see here now, it's like 174k. If I take this out, it drops down to 143,000. So that's a lot of DPS, okay? And then after you pick up this one, you can pick up Arcanist Domination. And then after that, you want to move down here and pick up Arcane Will. And then move down Deep Wisdom. And then you can open, uh, pick up Arcane Focus as well. So all these are Energy Shield and Mana. And then you want to pick up Wicked Ward as soon as you can. So Wicked Ward, uh, basically, your Energy Shield, when it, recharge, when it starts recharging... It wouldn't stop. It will stop interrupt. It will not be interrupted by damage. You know, sometimes when energy shield charge, they recharge, and someone attacks you, it will stop recharging. Okay, so basically this one will prevent that, and it will still continue recharging. Okay, and then after that, uh, you don't have to pick up the utmost intellect first. This one you can pick up later because you don't have much intellect in the beginning, so you can pick it up later if you want. And then you can pick up essence surge. Uh, gives you energy shield and faster start energy shield. I just want to uh, give you a small explanation on this fast start energy shield. How does it work? So basically, you want to scale as much as you can on faster start energy shield because uh, there is a delay before the energy shield starts recharging. Okay? If you... Okay, I'll just show you here. I'm just going to cast Righteous Fire. So Righteous Fire is going to burn my energy shield. And you see, it takes a while to actually recharge. All right? So the issue is just going down. Right, so and then okay now when it goes down to zero and see it pumps up it takes less than one second for me and it goes back up again so the the faster the energy shield recharge you have the faster it will recharge basically and when it when it starts recharging it will not stop 
Okay, so that is what you want to pick up. So that's the reason why I crafted uh, faster start energy shield on my rings as well. So I want it to start faster, basically. You want to try to get it below one second, so less than a second, it will recharge again. Um, and then after they pick up Throat Seeker here, and then afterward move forward, and then go up to Doomcast. So this one gives you crit and crit multi again. So for the burst damage, and then move down here, you can get spell damage and intelligence. Mana regen as well is always good. And crit multi, uh, trickery will give you uh, crit chance and also dex and intelligence. And here Soul Siphon gives you mana and 18% uh, uh, maximum mana and 5 mana gain on kill. And then uh, because we are reserving our life, we want to pick up Pain Attunement. So you will get 30% more spell damage when you are on low life. Okay, so what does this mean? As long as you're below 60% reserve life, you are considered low life, okay? So that means we get 30% more damage when we reserve our life. Perf pretty cool, huh? It all synchronized very well. And then, um, so Arcane Vision is something that I want to pick up because if you don't have Arcane Vision, when you go into maps, everything is dark. Because Light Radius, like if you've done delving before, Light Radius is basically the... Um, the, your vision in the map so if you don't have arcane vision and because you're doing you are low on life okay so like like uh, radius is based on your life so that means you want to pick this up so that means the light radius will be based on your energy shield instead of your life so the the map won't be pitch black you can not pick this up if you want but everything will be pitch black when you go into the maps okay it's up to you and then after that you want to move down here and pick up the dreamer so dreamer gives you 25 percent mana and mana regen which is really what we want and then move over here, Foresight will be uh, Flat Energy Shield and Energy Shield Regen and Recharge. And also pick up the uh, Path of Seven. Uh, that gives you uh, Mana, Intelligence and Spell Damage. Always cool. And let's see, then you pick up Upmost Intellect. And Deep Wisdom and Arcanist Domination. Yep, pick this up as well. And then move down here, I put the Watcher Side here. So the Watcher Side I'm actually using here is uh 38 percent faster start energy shield recharge while affected by discipline and uh 14 chance to recover 10 percent mana when you use the skill while affected by clarity so that's why i see 14 percent chance for me to recover 10 percent of my mana when i use a skill and the faster start recharge so this is why i synchronize with my build it, it syncs pretty well the auras i'm running right now will be wrath discipline and zealotry so Discipline gives me a lot of uh, energy shield. Uh, Wrath gives me uh, lightning damage. And Zillotry gives me more spell damage. And also um, it gives spell crit chance as well. Okay, So I'm running that 3 auras for damage. And lastly, I want to explain about the Cluster Jewels. So Cluster Jewels, I'm using um, the large Cluster Jewel I chose uh, lightning damage. So lightning damage, you want to pick up the most important one will be this one. Uh, Stin scintillating idea so this one gives you 20 percent mana and five percent and penetration on lightning really cool and then after that your medium cluster you want to pick up the flask effect duration you have to pick up flask effect duration solely because you want liquid inspiration which only can be gained from that one this one will give you another 15 percent max mana and then the small cluster you want to pick up um six percent increased mana as well and then after that you want to have openness gives you um, maximum mana flat and increase 20% maximum mana, okay? If you want to know how to craft uh, cluster jewels, you can check out my previous video. I have a video uh, crafting about uh, cluster jewels that you can check it out if you want. And yeah, that's about it for the skill tree, all right? And uh, we've gone through everything uh, pretty much, yeah. So uh, overall, the conclusion here is this, right? Um, to me personally, I think, uh, aside from the single target, the single target damage against the map boss is okay but against like the guardians and all that it's uh it's not that great okay i'm being honest with you uh and also the stun other than that it's actually really fun to play with okay so if you're looking for something like this to play around you want to try something new you want to try a new spellcaster build this one is something that you can try right and uh that's about it let's wrap it up so i uh, thank you very much for taking your time actually watching this video uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and learned something about it. Or if you have any ideas or suggestions on how to improve my build, be sure to put a com drop a comment below. I'll be more than happy to you know receive feedback uh, on how I can be better in this build as well. And also, if you have anything that you want to ask for the build, you can just drop a comment as well. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Follow me on uh, follow me 
on YouTube and Twitch as well. I stream every day, uh, 9 p.m. GMT plus 8 Asian time. And you can just drop by my stream, hang out, and just, you know, we can hang out and learn more about the build and uh, maybe some new ideas that we can actually implement into the build as well. And also, um, yeah. Feel free to, you know, drop by anytime. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your week. And I'll see you guys on the next video.